I've never done a hardcore Nuzlocke before, and today is my first ever attempt at this, and what better character to try it as than Paul? With the Indigo disc finally out, this gives us access to the majority of Paul's Pokemon, but with strict rules like the ones on the screen now, can Paul beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Violet? Let's find out. Our humble journey begins, so we can choose our starter. Unfortunately, Paul didn't have any of these Pokemon, so we just choose Fuecoco. This gives Nimona a Sprigatito too. Our Fuecoco, I mean he's an imposter, it's actually actually an Elekid we start with, and we nickname him Zeus. We have a quick battle with Nimona and she proves she's not worthy of being our rival. As we beat down on her Sprigatito, she'll have to get a lot more powerful than that to stand a chance against us. Me and Elekid are ready to take on Paldea and we start getting to work. Well he's still a bit slow but we gotta train him up. On our way we also see a Fletchling in clear distress but Paul wouldn't help such a weak Pokemon, so neither will we. We have some story stuff to take care of, but the brief summary is, we find a Hurt Dragon, we give Hurt Dragon a sandwich, her dragon fully heals, dragon now saves us from certain doom, and now dragon is our best friend and we can use it as a motorbike. Beautiful. Now in counter wise, we can't really catch anything below level 15 we can use for now, and there's one Pokemon I can't catch at all in the base game. So thanks to help from some friends, we now have a Turtwig and a Gligar on the team too, nicknamed Cronus and Alistair. Our first challenge is Katie for the Cortando Gym. We have a level cap of just 15. First we have to knock around a massive olive into this basket. With our Maridon's help, it's no issue at all, and now we can battle the gym leader. So Katie is a bug specialist, and well, she also has a Teddy Ursa, but we have Alistair, a strong flying type who can terrestrialize on her first Pokemon Nimple to a pure flying type. Then with her boosted wing attack, we take down her first Pokemon with so much ease. Second, she sends out Tarantula, but it's the same scenario. We take it down with another boosted wing attack. Last but not least is Teddy Ursa, somebody who is going to be joining the team very soon. Katie is just too weak to have that kind of Pokemon. With a critical hit, boosted wing attack, we take it down and that is an easy badge number one for Paul. It's back to back fights for us now though as we take on the mighty Crab Cloth, the first titan of many to come. However, his first stage is no match for our little Kranos and the real fight begins here. So we get help on the powered up titan from Shelder, but Cloth's Rock Tomb does way more damage now and it nearly takes down Cronus. Thanks to the Orin Berry, we heal up a little bit too and Shelder's Water Guns and our Razor Leaves put him at nearly half. I'm not taking my chances, so I swap into Alistair now as we tank a Rock Tomb much, much better. Shelder is using Life do a move that heals both Pokemon on the field, so now I'm pretty confident. We get hit by a Vice Grip that does basically nothing, and we hit a knockoff as Shelder keeps healing us. Cloth now blocks, preventing us from escaping as our knockoff activates Anger Shell. This raises his attack and speed, but lowers his defenses too. Shelder's Water Guns now do a massive amount of damage as we tank a Rock Tomb, nearly taking Alistair out. But our Berry heals us, and Shelder finishes off Cloth with a Water Gun. With that, we beat our first Titan of the game. We can power up our Mirage done with a sandwich allowing us to dash. I actually forgot we can catch a new encounter here on this route and this is where we add a Makuita to the team. We catch him pretty easily and we nickname him Heracles. He's got the ability Guts which is great and a jolly nature too so not the best for a Makuita but not the worst. Just before our next gym we can actually catch a Teddy Ursa too. He's level 20 so we can't use him just yet but we call him Hypnose. So it's time for the next gym. Before we can challenge it we have to find some flora that are hiding and by hiding I mean the stud in plain sight. After rounding up probably the world's fastest Sunflora, we complete the gym challenge and can challenge the gym. The gym leader is Brassius, he's a grass type gym leader. He leads with a petty lil and we lead off with Alistair, but it's the same as a bug gym, this is going to be a pretty easy fight. We terrestrialize Alistair into a flying terror type, boosting our wing attack more. Petty lil falls into a single attack. His second Pokemon is a Smoliv, but the little Olive doesn't stand a chance either, and Alistair is just wrecking havoc. His last Pokemon is a Sudden Woodle, possibly a problem, but he terrestrializes him into a Grass type, meaning our Wing Attack is now super effective, and we do over half with a single attack. Sudden Woodle then hits a powered up Trailblaze, but it does practically nothing. This means a final Wing Attack destroys his Ace Sudden Woodle, and we defeat Brassius. Thanks to leveling up to 18, our Cronus evolves into a Grottle, which is fantastic, and then we get our second gym badge. With the level cap now being 20, we can add Hypnos to the party, and our next stop is Titan number 2, Bombardier. Before that, I grab the TM for Rock Tomb, which we're probably
probably going to need for this fight. So we start off phase one of Bombardier pretty well. A Terror Blasted Shockwave does way over half to the giant bird, but a Rock Tomb really hurts our baby Pokemon. It activates our berry, which heals us a little bit, before the next turn we can finish phase one with a final Shockwave. Now, this Titan doesn't give you a chance to heal between phases, so I'm still a bit worried. Now it powers up by eating Herba Mystica, and I really don't want to lose Risk and Zeus here so soon, so I swap into Alistair. Bombardier targets Nackley with a Rock Throw though, and he raises his speed, so the best case scenario. Alistair is doing fantastic damage with Rock Throw, lowering Bombardier's speed too, as Nackley just keeps raising his speed. Bombardier then plucks our berry from Alistair, which isn't very nice of him, healing him in the process. Nackley still isn't doing anything useful at all, he just keeps raising his speed with Rock Polish, as we keep throwing rocks at him. Bombardier actually helps us out now by tormenting Nackley, so we can't Rock Polish anymore, cheers for that. Nackley hits a Smackdown, and then we hit a Rock Tomb to finish the fight, and so far Alistair has been crucial to the early game. With Bombardier defeated, we now power up Maridon some more with another sandwich, and that's Titan number 2 defeated. There's no rest for Paul, we need to become more powerful, so next we go to the Team Star Dart Base, where their aim is to defeat 30 Pokemon in a time limit. It's pretty easy for our team as we have some good fighting moves and fighting Pokemon, and now we can challenge the leader, Giacomo. I probably said that wrong, let me know if I did. His lead is a Ponyard, and we lead off with Zeus. We're faster than him, and a dual chop straight away obliterates his first Pokemon, being four times weak to fighting. And now he sends out his ace, the Reverune, also known as a Starmobile. Now, this is a pretty scary Pokemon, especially because our team is relatively frail at this point. He intimidates Zeus and then hits a wicked talk, doing a lot of damage and activating our berry, which heals us. Our cross chop in return does a nice little chunk to him, but we've got to swap. I'm not risking Zeus. So we swap into Heracles as he goes for a metal sound. That's not great either. We terrestrialize into a fighting type, giving us the advantage as he hits a swift, doing good damage. Our boosted force palm, however, is doing so much damage to him in return. We take another swift, putting us on a sliver of HP, and hit a force palm, bringing him low. It's time to swap now, so into Cronus we go. We get hit by a wicked torque on the swap, but we tank it really nicely. We then get hit by another wicked torque, and now we are low, activating our berry yet again, healing us a little more. Cronus hits a trailblaze for fantastic damage damage and raises our speed. The Starmobile just goes for a metal sound and with that he has just sealed his fate as Cronus picks up the KO defeating Giacomo and with that we get our first team star badge. With the level cap now raised to 24 for our next gym leader I decide now to get another encounter for our team who's not going to be much help for this fight but will be valuable later on. We catch his Shellos and we nickname him Poseidon. I also spent a bit of time crafting some TMs out of materials to get some better moves for our Pokemon. The electric gym leader is Iono and she can be quite scary. Luckily we have a few ground moves now so let's see how we perform. Iono's lead is a watch roll and we lead off with Zeus. We are faster and shockwave is doing great damage as watch roll spark isn't actually doing too much to us in return. We both keep exchanging the same moves the next turn and then we're still sitting rather comfortably and Zeus takes down watch roll with a final attack. Iono's second pokemon is a Luxio with intimidate lowering Zeus's attack. I go for a cross chop and we still do nearly half as we take quite a chunk from a bite, but this activates our berry and we heal a little bit in return. I play it super risky now and cross chop and we miss and Luxio's bite puts us on a sliver. Okay, no more silly plays. I swap into Heracles now on the incoming bite which we tanked nicely. We then get sparked for way more damage than I thought and paralyzed, activating our guts ability. This means a single bulldoze takes down Luxio. Out next is Belly Bolt. His ability electromorphosis means if you attack him first, you power up his next attack. I decide to stay in and take a spark to 3 HP and we hit a bulldoze for over half. What did I just say about making risky plays? We have a safe switch into Alistair now on the incoming boosted spark, which we're immune to. We then use Ice Fang, nearly taking him out as Belly Bolt hits a super effective water gun, which we take pretty nicely. A final Ice Fang and that's Belly Bolt down. This leaves her final Pokemon, a Mischievous. She terrestrializes into her electric type and has the ability Levitate, so ground moves are no use here. We throw rocks at her, critically hitting and lowering her speed as she hits Hex, taking Alistair super low. We now swap to Hypnos on the incoming Hex, giving us some time to shine finally. Miss Magius then goes for a Confuse Ray, confusing our poor bear, and of course we hit ourselves in confusion. I now swap into Cronus as she goes for a boosted Charge Beam, which we tank completely, but she gets a special attack raise. We then terrestrialize into a pure Grass type, as Miss Magius then goes for a Confuse Ray on Cronus too, and then he hits himself, because of course he does. Miss Magius then hits a powerful Hex, putting Cronus low and activating his berry, healing him up a little bit, but we're still confused. Cronus 
breaks through the confusion and hits a terror boosted trailblaze to take down the annoying Miss Magius and finally beat Iono. With that, we get another gym badge. We take on another Team Star base now. I forgot to record Heracles evolving, but we now have a final form Pokemon in Harry Armor. With the level cap now being 27 too, we can also add Poseidon to our team. A water type, and don't just judge him on his size, he's gonna be a star, and let me show you why. So Mela leads off with a Torkoal and sets up Drought powering up fire type moves, and we lead off with Shellos. I didn't grab the Rain Dance TM like I probably should have, but we Terrastalize into a pure water type, and our little Sea Slug is faster than the Turtle. We throw rocks at him, fishing for a boost and do fantastic damage too but we don't get it. Torkoal then hits a flame wheel for not much damage but of course he burns us too. Fantastic. So now we take chip damage every turn. I throw rocks at the turtle again still fishing for that boost and this time we get it. This gives us a plus one to every single stat powering up our shellos even more as Torkoal flame wheels again putting us below half after burn damage. Thankfully when you catch him shellos knows recovers too so I heal up all the missing HP as we take another flame wheel and some more burn damage in the process. The next turn we throw rocks at Torkoal one last time and take him down. This leaves her last Pokemon, the Reveroom. Sun is still active and he's faster and a Blazing Torque still doesn't do too much as we hit a Terra boosted plus one Surf to do close to half to him. Speed Boost activates raising his speed and he decides to screech harshly low in our defence. To play it safe I opted to recover to put us at a very healthy amount of HP and the Sun finally wears off too. This means Reveroon's Blazing Torque doesn't do as much as it would have and a final boosted Terra Surf obliterates the Starmobile, taking down Mela of Team Star. She lets us know that our Poseidon really gave it to her and damn right he did. And with that, we have another Team Star badge. There's no rest for the Wicked and Paul still has to conquer Paldea. Now we have a meeting with the Steel Titan, Orthworm. Our lead is obviously the powerful fighting type Heracles. Stage 1 is honestly a bit of a joke. Our Force Palm is a 2 hit knockout and this activates Stage 2. After we spend a little bit of time playing Find the Worm in the ground, I make a misplay instantly and go for a knockoff that really doesn't do too much to Orthworm as he wraps Heracles so he takes damage each turn. Toad School actually does something great here and goes for a screech, harshly lowering Orthworm's defense. This means a super effective Force Palm from our fighting type does a tremendous amount of damage leaving him only on a sliver as he sets up a Sandstorm. Toad School then goes for a supersonic but he dodges it and then we take Sandstorm and wrap damage putting us below half. None of this matters though as a final Force Palm from Heracles and we defeat Orthworm. With that, we beat another Titan and get it's time for another gym battle and we need to head to Cascarafa. With the level cap now being 30, I decided before the fight to get our team up to level 32 in the desert. By doing so, Poseidon evolves into a Gastrodon and Hypnos evolves into an Ursaring. And finally, Zeus evolves into a Lectabuzz. We're also due another encounter, so thanks to some friend's help, we have a Magmar sat in the box named Vulcan. If we need it, but for now, I like Paul's team. It's shaping up great. Zeus is near his full potential and he's going to be great for us this fight. So our lead is Zeus and Kofu leads off with a new Gen 9 Pokemon Veluza. We Terrastalize turn 1 boosting our electric type moves more and a boosted electric thunder punch takes down Veluza in a single hit. He then sends out the Paldean form of Dugtrio. I mean it's not actually but you won't believe it. Wug Trio. And it's the same scenario. Our well-trained Zeus is just too powerful for his water types and down he goes. This leaves his final Pokemon, his ace, Crabominable. He terrestrializes into a water type and that's just not good news for him. With a final Terra boosted Thunder Punch, we knock out the crab in a single hit, giving us an extremely easy victory over Kofu and a needed one after Iono. But from the team we currently have, it's to be expected. I expect rough things coming up though. And with that, that's badge number four. Then we have another team star base to take on. And this time it's a poison type. I spent a little bit of time getting the Earthquake craftable TM and finding some materials to help us with this. The boss for the next Team Star base is Atricious, a poison type leader. His lead is a Skuntank and ours is Zeus. Turn 1 we get Sucker Punch doing a great amount of damage to our Zeus and then we miss a Cross Chop. Bad start. We then hit a Cross Chop doing close to half and we get poisoned. It's even worse. After taking poison damage I still stay in and Cross Chop but we miss out on the knockout and we take a Venoshock to the face putting us on 9 HP. Thankfully I have a Berry or that would have been the end of Zeus. I decide to not risk another miss and swap into Alistair. We resist the Venoshock and take it very well. Skuntank sucker punches Alistair and in return dies to a rocky helmet. Next, Atricia sends out Reveroom. No, not the vehicle yet. We hit a pathetic acrobatics and then take an iron head to only 15 HP. That's not good. I now swap to Hypnos, hoping to take a better hit, but we don't, and an iron head puts Hypnos at less than half two. Our team is getting battered and we're only on his second Pokemon. I now 
now going to Poseidon. We need to start taking down some of his Pokemon. Poseidon tanks an Iron Head very well, and then we take a weak insurance too. Our Surf is doing massive damage, but we miss out on the KO. Reverin bulldozes, lowering our speed, and a Surf takes down his second Pokemon. Next out is Muk, but it really can't hurt our Poseidon. We resist Sludge Waves and can recover up HP. We then get Sludge Waves, and our Surf is doing about half to him. We take one more Sludge Wave, and then we take out Muk with another Surf. This leaves his last Pokemon, the Starmobile. We still resist his Poison type's move, and we can Surf for big damage. On the second attack though, we get poisoned as we go for a recover. That's not good for our longevity. I decide now is the time to Terrastalize, but the next Noxious Torp does a lot more damage thanks to removing our ground type in, and now our Surf does great damage, but at the cost of Poseidon's HP. We're slowly running out of options here, so I swap into Heracles and take a Noxious Torque on the switch. We tank it okay, and then we take another, putting us below half. Then we fire off a huge earthquake, putting Reverum on a sliver too. This might be a close call. I decide to risk it and stay in, but Reverum flame charges for practically nothing. And with that, we hit an earthquake to take down the Starmobile and beat Atricious, giving us another Team Star victory. But the difficulty is definitely starting to ramp up now. That was getting too close for comfort. After grinding up on some trainers in the forest, Cronus now finally evolves to his final form tour, Terror. This gives us a fantastic ground and grass type on the team. Bye. By totally not just skipping the trainers and going straight to Larry with my previous knowledge of the gym test, we can challenge him for the first time. The first time we face him, he's a normal type gym leader, and he leads off with a Kamala. I lead off with Hypnos, as so far he's not really impressed me or had the chance to. Turn 1, our low kick is doing fantastic damage at about half, as Kamala goes for a yawn. Turn 2, I decide to get the knockout with a final low kick, and Hypnos is putting in some work now. Though, now we fall asleep on Dudunsparce, his next Pokemon. I hate this thing. I decide to burn a turn his sleep as Dudunsparce hits a Hyper Drill doing way too much damage. We then swap to Alistair on the next Hyper Drill and we take it a little bit better and get off some chip damage with Rocky Helmet. We then hit an Acrobatics that does basically nothing and then get paralysed by a Glare. Great. We eat another Hyper Drill and get off some more chip damage bringing him to the red after an Acrobatics. Then we swap to Poseidon. As we swap to Poseidon, Dudunsparce's Hyper Drills are just destroying me. We have leftovers now so we get a little bit of HP back. We take yet another Hyper Drill putting Poseidon on low before we throw rocks at him to take him out, but we don't get a stat boost. This is not a good thing, most of our team is now pretty low and now we have his ace star raptor. I immediately swap into Zeus who I'm hoping can deal with his threat. Larry terrestrializes star raptor into a normal type on the swap, so our electric moves won't be dealing as much damage now. Star raptor hits a boosted facade and it just destroys us. Our berry heals us, but we're now in big big trouble. I then swap immediately to Cronus and then the next terror boosted facade we take a little bit better and this is yet another misplay on my behalf. I stay in thinking we can live another facade, but he goes for an aerial ace and we don't, and Cronus is the first Pokemon on the run to fall, just after reaching its max potential too. RIP buddy. We're now in a dire situation. Our last hope is Heracles, who is weak to flying too. We terrestrialize to boost our fighting type moves more and get off chip damage with a fake out, and I also didn't level him up much compared to the rest of the team. This is bad. Thankfully we are powerful and our fake out does a nice chunk to him. Star Raptor the next turn aerial aces, but we just hold on. We hit a terror boosted stab force palm and thankfully, thankfully, take down Star Raptor. If we didn't, I'm nearly 100% sure this run was over. That was close. We get a little bit of a breather now by heading to the next gym. We add Vulcan to the team, our Magmar, and it's about time Alistair gets to evolve. If we level it up at night, holding a Razor Fang, it evolves into Gliscor. We can get a few more encounters now too. Here we can catch a female Snow Runt, thankfully, and nickname it Boreas, who has an awful nature in Lonely, and we evolve her with a Dust Stone and send her to the box. Then, on the actual mountain itself, we can get one more encounter, a Sneasel, and nickname it Ares. If we level it up while it's still night, we get a Weavile, but he's getting box two for now. While the two Pokemon we just caught would be fantastic for Rhyme, I want to stick with what I've got, even though I may regret it. So, Rhyme is a unique gym leader for these games. She focuses on double battles, and the crowd can also provide stat boost depending on how the fight goes. But I have two Pokemon who are perfect for this fight in Hypnos and Heracles, so we lead with them, as Rhyme leads with a Mimikyu and a Binette. Our Pokemon are pretty slow, even with a Jolly Nature Harry armor. So, Binette Shadow Sneaks Heracles, then Mimikyu critical hits a slash, putting him on close to half already. A knockoff from our monster though destroys Burnett with a critical hit, returning the favour, and Hypnos can break Mimikyu's disguise with a play rough. Thanks to the knockout, the crowd gives my team a raise in our attack and that's fantastic. 
The next turn, Mimic Use slashes Heracles again, bringing him lower, and now Heracles can one-shot a Houndstone with a knockoff thanks to the attack reach. Hypnos, at a plus one attack, can also take down Mimic Use with a player rough, and she only has one Pokemon left. This is Array's Toxicity. She drastalizes into a pure ghost type, and I actually swap out Heracles, not risking a discharge crit or a kill. And we go into Alistair, who resists it. Hypnos takes quite a bit of damage, and then Play Rust taking Toxicity low. The crowd now give Toxicity an ancient power boost, racing every one of his stats by one. Not risking Hypnos, I try to play it cool by swapping into Poseidon on the incoming discharge, but Rhyme goes for a hyper voice. Thankfully, we have two bulky Pokemon that eat it really well before Alistair can throw rocks at Toxicity, taking it out, and with that, we beat Rhyme and get another gym badge. The level cap's getting much higher now, but there's another Titan we need to take on, and this is Iron Treads. Stage 1 was really easy, with Earthquakes from Alistair making him run off and power up. Now, Stage 2 Iron Treads can be tricky depending on the Pokemon you have available, but Alistair is just a fantastic wall for this thing. We hit a few Crab Hammers, and he hits Iron Heads on Skull Villain, who resists it as well. Skull Villain firefangs Iron Treads, and we hit a final Crab Hammer to take him down, and honestly, this was a super easy Titan fight. With that, we defeat the Quaking Titan, and get ourselves another titan badge. This only leaves a final titan left for us to fight in the game, but we'll get back to that in a little while. In the cavern, we get another encounter, and here I catch a goodbye who we call Kratos, and send him to the box for now. We have our battle with another gym leader coming up, but with the end game fast approaching and our level cap being 45, I decide it's a fantastic time to finally let Zeus and Vulcan reach their full potential. Meet Zeus, the now powerful Electivire, and Vulcan, the now powerful Magmortar. After possibly one of the most annoying gym challenges, I could couldn't bring myself to show it to you. We can challenge Tulip. She's a psychic type gym leader, and honestly, I'm not sure how well we can deal with her ace. Let's do it. Okay, the fight starts off terribly. I make a silly, silly misplay and fake out for Aphorig, who has the ability Armor Tail, meaning fake out doesn't work. I mean, this thing doesn't even have a tail, but all right. And that means we eat a Zen Headbutt, doing way over half to our Heracles. I swap to Poseidon, as we really don't have good answers, and he's our bulkiest Pokemon. On the swap, we dodge a Zen Headbutt too, thankfully. I now go for the Ancient Power Strap. Farafarig sets up Reflect, and we throw rocks at him, and we're instantly rewarded with a boost to every single one of our stats. Perfect. We are now faster, and we throw more rocks at him, but we don't get a boost, and we eat a Zen Headbutt very well thanks to our defense boost, and our leftovers healing, making us extremely durable. We throw rocks again at Farafarig, and this time we get another boost. Poseidon's RNG with Ancient Power is absolutely fantastic. This now makes us a force to be reckoned with, as we tank yet another Zen Headbutt. Now we can finish off the Giraffe by throwing more more rocks at him, but no boost. Tulip sends out Gardevoir next. It knows Energy Ball, and we're four times weak to grass. However, if we Terrestrialize into a Water type, we can boost the power of our Surf, and with the times two boost to speed, we're faster. And with a Surf, that's enough to take down Gardevoir in a single hit. Third, she sends out a Spartha. The Psychic Ostrich is still faster than our Sea Slug, but we're just so bulky now. It can't hurt us, and we eat a Psychic. Then we take it out with a boosted Surf, and this is looking great for Poseidon. Maybe a Sweep incoming? Tulip then sends out a race Forgeus. She terrestrializes into a pure psychic type, and thanks to Forgeus's natural bulk, it survives the surf quite well and hits a petal blizzard. But we have a times two special defense, and we got rid of our ground typing, so we eat it really nicely. With a final surf, we can take down Forgeus, and with that, we beat Tulip, and we get a Poseidon sweep. And this means we have seven badges and only one more to go. With only one badge left to get, we might as well get it now, so it's time to take on the final gym and the gym leader, Grusher. After sliding all the way back down the mountain on Maridon, we have our final battle with Grusher, an ice type specialist, and this time we can give some spotlight to Vulcan. He's our lead as Grusher leads with his Frostmoth. It's bug and ice type, so it's four times weak to fire. Vulcan then tolls him with a flamethrower, and that's a great start for us. Second, Grusher chooses Bear Tick, but it's the same scenario. The ice bear can't stand the raw heat from our Vulcan and falls to a single flamethrower too. Third is a great Pokemon in Sea Titan. We are faster, but it's pretty bulky and survives our flames, and then nearly takes us out of a liquidation, as our Citrus Berry heals us up a little bit, putting us just in the green, and with a final flamethrower, Vulcan takes down Sea Titan. This leaves Grusher's last Pokemon and and his ace, Altaria. It terrestrializes into a pure ice type, and I make a risky play staying in. We are faster than Altaria, and we critical hit a flamethrower, taking him down, and with that we beat all eight gym badges, which Paul was always going to do. But Paul still has some work to do in Paldea before we can take on the league. We have a team star base right around the corner, the fairy type base and 
the leader Ortega. Now Hypno should be able to put in some solid work, so that's our lead into his team. Straight away we show our strength, we outspeed Azumarill and hit a gunk shot for an easy one hit knockout on his first Pokemon. Second is Wigglytuff, but like the Azumarill that stood before it, the Mighty Barbear is too much and a gunk shot obliterates Wigglytuff also. Third is Daushbun, a new fairy type introduced in Generation 9. It's got a great speed stat and hits a play rough, bringing us close to half HP before Hypnos fires off some more poison with a gunk shot and takes it down, really putting in some solid work. This just leaves a Starmobile Rever Room. It has a Misty Surge ability, so it sets up the terrain. Then it immediately Steel Rollers doing massive damage and gets rid of the mist as our gunk shot does connect, doing close to half, an insane amount of damage. But now we have to switch. I go into Vulcan, who resists a magical torque on the swap. Then Rever Room decides to be a pain and confuse us with Confuse Ray, but Vulcan breaks through and hits a flamethrower, bringing Rever Room low. We take one more magical torque and we just need to connect this attack, but we hit ourselves in confusion. This now puts Vulcan way too low, so we have to swap. I go into Zeus, we take a magical talk okay, then we outspeed and hit a thunder punch to put him on 1 HP, then we get confused again. I'm not risking a hit and confusion than losing Zeus to a magical talk, so we swap again into Alistair. We take a magical talk and get confused from it. This is ridiculous. Thankfully, we still got quite high HP. We stay in, get hit again, and Alistair has had enough of Ortega and connects in acrobatics, defeating the Starmobile and defeating Ortega, getting our 7th star badge. This leaves 1 Titan and 1 star badge left to go before the end game. Our last Titan is Tatsuguri and Dondonzo. The stage 1 is a joke, as always, because Zeus is an electric god and 2 thunder punches activate stage 2. So our lead is still our electric god Zeus and we terastalize turn 1 on Dondonzo. This allows us to power up our already amazing attack stat and hit a super effective thunder punch, bringing Dondozo below half in a single attack. Dondozo jumps on Greedon's head, but does little, and he hits a little takedown too. With a final powered up thunder punch, we take down Dondozo, beating the last Titan. Wait we have the real false dragon to face, and that's Tatsuguri. I decide to just vault switch out into Poseidon to play it safe, as it may be small, but it for sure packs a punch. As Tatsuguri then goes for an Ice Wind, lowering our speed, but Greedon's takedown is still doing some good damage. The next turn, Tatsuguri Muddy War is activating our ability Storm Drain, raising our special attack. We spend a few turns throwing rocks at Tatsuguri, and he eventually takes down Arvin's Greedon, leaving us in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We're getting pretty low, and we're starting to get low ourselves, so I decide to switch to Heracles. We tank an icy wind on the swap very nicely. The next turn, Tatsuguri goes for a taunt and Heracles, showing his strength, takes him down with a single close combat. And now with that, we've defeated our last titan of the game and we get our last titan badge off Arvin. This just leaves a final Team Star base to take down, and that's Eri, the fighting type. Her team is scary and I'm worried, but we do have Alistair. Let's do it. Her lead is Krogun, can we lead off with Alistair? Turn 1 Krogun tries sucker punching us, but we go for a sword stance boosting our attack by two stages. The next turn the sucker punch lands, doing a good chunk because he critical hits me, and then Alistair proceeds to destroy Krogun with an acrobatic. Eri now sends out a huge threat to the team in Annihilate. This ghost fighting type is a problem. It has Ice Punch and I'm not risking Alistair, so I swap into Poseidon on the Ice Punch and we eat it quite well. And then we get a heal from a little bit of our leftovers. The next turn, Annihilate annihilates our HP with a close combat, lowering his defenses as our ancient power does nothing. And that was a misplay from me. I should have served. We now have to switch, but our switchings are so limited. I go into Heracles, who takes a close combat a little better, leaving us on about half HP. His defenses are now super low, so I stay in as he just fire punches us, but our knockoff still doesn't take him out. We're in big trouble. I swap to Vulcan now, hoping he goes for another fire punch, but Eri lets out a massive roar and Annihilate goes for a Rage Fist that completely destroys Vulcan, killing him. But as a last act of defiance, Flame Body activates, burning him, reducing his attack stat. Damn, I cannot believe we've lost Vulcan already. We then go into Zeus, who's faster and can just take him out of a Thunder Punch, avenging Vulcan. Eri sends out Passiman next. I need to start putting a dent in her team, so I stay in and terastalize and we hit a boosted thunder punch, but we just miss out on the knockout, and Passiman's close combat nearly takes out Zeus too. We know we are faster, so a final thunder punch can take out Passiman. Eri now chooses Lucario, and honestly looking at my team, we're kinda screwed. We only have Hypnos, who's super weak to fight in, and Alistair, who we need. My only choice is to hope a cross chop takes out Lucario, and it does, thankfully. We are turning this back around, but now we have the star 
Starmobile, Rev Room to take care of, and its ability is Stamina, boosting his defense when we hit him. We swap to Alistair, who's practically our only hope now, as he high horsepower, so we don't take any damage on the switch. We then can Acrobatics to Starmobile, doing massive damage thanks to not having an item, but his defense raises thanks to Stamina. He then hits a spin out that Alistair tanks like a champ. We Acrobatics again, and it's in the red as it's spin out once again, but it does a little bit to us. With a final Acrobatics, Alistair takes down the Starmobile in what is the closest battle we've had yet. Our team is battered and bruised and we lost Vulcan. With every beat we get our final team star badge and we've took down all three paths now. Now we're in the end game. Before leaving the forest I grinded up Kratos and added him to the team. He evolves into Garchomp giving us an extremely powerful Pokemon. Now we are in the end game. It's time to face the Elite Four. The team is powered up with as many vitamins and feathers I could give them. Let's do it. First is Rika, the ground type Elite Four specialist. Her lead is a Wish Cash and we lead off with Poseidon who matches up extremely well here. We tank an Earth Power very well then hit a Water Terra Boosted Surf to bring Wish Cash very low. We have leftovers so the passive recovery helps here for sure. We tank another Earth Power to just over half and then we take down the first of her Pokemon with a final Surf. Second she sends out Domfan. He hits a super hard Earthquake and I go for a recover scouting out what's going to happen. I don't want to let Poseidon take too much damage here so I swap into Alistair on the Earthquake which we're immune to. We then hit a critical hit crab hammer to bring Donphan very low as we take a stone edge pretty decently I must say. We then proceed to take out Donphan with an ice fang. Third Rika sends out camera up. It's four times weak to water so a crab hammer demolishes a fire camel and so far so good. Fourth Rika chooses Doug Trio. He sets up the sandstorm boosting the team's special defense but Doug Trio is extremely frail and another crab hammer takes it down. This leaves Rika's ace clod sire. It has the ability water absorb and I know it has a water move too. Our best play is to swap back to Poseidon as Rika terastalizes into a pure ground type and she does in fact liquidation raising our special attack thanks to our ability. We then exchange Change earth powers and earthquakes but Poseidon is coming out on top. With a final earth power we take down Clodsire and we defeat our first elite 4 member. Second is Poppy the steel type expert. It's time for Kratos to shine now as we lead with him and she leads with Copper Arja. Kratos shows his might instantly by taking out the steel elephant with a single earthquake. This brings out Poppy's answer to earthquake Corviknight. We swap into Zeus a god of thunder on a brave bird and we take it pretty easily. Then with a super effective thunder punch we take it out. Third Poppy chooses bronze Zong, and the earthquake is coming, so I swap into Heracles. We then fire off a super effective knockoff, but we don't quite take it out, and then in return we get hit by a Zen headbutt, putting us at a super low HP. We can take out Bronzong then with a knockoff. Poppy's next Pokemon is Magnezone. I swap back to Kratos as he does in fact discharge, giving us a free switch in. We then proceed to Earthquake, bringing him to his sturdy as he just sets up a useless light screen. Kratos then picks up another knockout with a final earthquake. This leaves Poppy's ace and it's part fairy type, Tinkerton, but she terastalizes it into a pure steel type, meaning Kratos outspeeds and finishes Tinkerton in a single earthquake and with that we're halfway through the Elite Four. Third is our good old friend Larry. He's a flying type Elite Four member now. I opt to lead Hypnos here and he leads off with a grass flying type Tropius. It's a fantastic start for our bear as we outspeed and get the one hit knockout with a gunk shot. Second is Star Raptor, a big threat. I swap to Alistair who tanks a close combat extremely well and it lowers his defense. The next turn Alistair is faster and hits an Ice Fang just shy of a knockout as Star Raptor hits a really hard Brave Bird taking itself out in the process. Next up is Larry's Altaria. We swap to Poseidon on the Ice Beam and we take everything Altaria throws at us really well. It takes us 3 ancient powers before we finally take him down. We didn't get any boost for Poseidon this time. Next is Oricorio. We take an Air Slash pretty well and throw rocks at this bird too but we get flinched shortly after and now we're out of ancient powers. Oricorio teeter dances us confusing us because of course we get confused but thankfully Poseidon breaks through and takes it out with a surf. This leaves Larry's last Pokemon in Ace, Flamigo, but we're in a predicament. This thing will hurt something on my team badly. I don't have the best switch-ins and I opt to make a risky play here and swap into Zeus as Flamigo hits a close combat that we barely survive, but he lowers his defenses in the process. I decide to riskily stay in and hope we outspeed. We terastalize boosting our Thunder Punch more and thankfully we do outspeed, meaning a weakened defenseless Flamigo falls to a single Thunder Punch and with that we we defeat Larry once again, one more Elite Four to face. 
Last but not least is Hassel, the Dragon type Elite 4 member. I've taught Poseidon Ice Beam to help us out with his fight as he's our best lead as Hassel leads with Neuven. Neuven starts a battle by super vanging Poseidon doing exactly 50% as our Ice Beam just straight up takes out the flying Dragon type. This now brings in Flapple. The grass move is coming so I swap into Hypnos as we take a seed bomb but not too well. We have a fairy type move and a lot of speed so we do outspeed and take it out with a single play rough. Dragalgy is Hassel's third Pokemon. I decide to stay in an Earthquake in a Hypnos critical hit, taking out Dragalgy and this is looking really good. Hassel now sends out Haxorus next and I make a mistake. I stay in with too much confidence and I'm punished from a Dragon Claw from Haxorus, taking out Hypnos and putting us on death number 3. Damn, he's been so fun to use Hypnos and has always helped out when he did. RIP. We now send out our Kratos and we immediately Terrastalize, powering up our Dragon moves. It's a risky play but Kratos is out for revenge and takes down Haxorus with a single Dragon Claw. This leaves his ace and last Pokemon back Scalibur. It's got an amazing attack stat and Kratos will fall if it attacks us. I know we will be faster so back Excalibur terrestrializes, removing its steel typing, and Kratos with a devastating Dragon Claw takes it down, beating Hassel and beating the Elite Four. This leaves one trainer left to face. And that's the top champion Jeter. With Hypnos' demise, I've added Boreas to the team, but I didn't have enough XP to level her fully up, so she's a little behind. Let's do this. We lead off with Boreas, who's still faster than the Psychic Ostrich Jeter leads off with, even at a lower level. And with a super effective Shadow Ball, we deal with Jeter's first Pokemon. Second, is the awesome Bisharp evolution, King Gambit. I decide to stay in and Will-O-Wisp reducing its attack stats, it can be a scary Pokemon to deal with. A Stone Edge still severely hurts our Boreas now, so we can't stay in anymore. I swap into Heracles, who takes a Cataclysm like an absolute champ. Then we show off his strength once more by destroying King Gambit with a close combat. Jeter sends out Golgo next, and I know a play rough is coming, so I swap into Alistair, but he misses, and that's lucky for us, no damage taken. We then fire off a boosted Acrobatics with no item, and that is enough to end the goal. Jeter's next Pokemon is Veluza. It's an easy switch from Alistair into Zeus as Veluza hits an Ice Fang and thankfully we don't get frozen. With a massive electric fist, Zeus takes down the fish and we're nearly through the fight. Out next, however, is a defensively bulky Avalug. I swap to Poseidon who should be able to tank most things as Ice Slab throws at us. And I'm right, a body press hurts on the swap but nothing our Poseidon can't handle. We throw rocks at the Ice Slab doing massive damage thanks to its low special defense and we start getting hurt from body presses. I decide to recover once more as I want more HP going into the last fight and the body press doesn't do too much to us this time and after leftovers we're all good. I decide now to terrestrialize our Poseidon into a water type and then we throw rocks again at the ice slab. No more boost for Poseidon though, he's used up all of his luck. This just leaves Jeter's last Pokemon and Ace Glamora. She terrestrializes into a pure rock type and hits a sludge wave hurting Poseidon but we live and hit a terror boosted surf for the one hit knockout. With that we beat Jeter and become champion. However, there is still a few more things for Paul to do before this runs complete. With a final level cap now of roughly 67, we take on Arvin first. His team is pretty diverse as he uses all the Pokemon he's battled the Titans with, but we match up super well versus his team. I lead off with Heracles and Arvin's lead is a Greedon. I terrestrialize immediately into my fighting type, boosting our close combat even more, and there is no way this little squirrel can stand to it and Greedon falls to an attack. Second, he sends out Skullvillain, and I do love this Pokemon. It's actually pretty slow, so Heracles outspeeds and hits a boosted close combat again for another one hit knockout. So far, so good. With our defenses being super low though and Toll Scroll having a good speed start, I swap into Boreas who gets hit by a Power Whip and honestly doesn't take it super well. But I know Boreas is faster and a 4x Ice Beam makes short work of him. Out comes Garganical, the Minecraft block Pokemon, and we swap into Poseidon who's been such an MVP as Garganical sets up Stealth Rocks on the swap. We then surf to bring him super low and take a body press. What is it with Pokemon wanting to jump on Poseidon? We then throw rocks, always fishing for that ancient power boost, but we don't get it. Arvin sends out Cloyster next, but it's got extremely poor special defense. It goes for a liquidation, raising our special attack stat even more thanks to our ability Storm Drain, and then it falls to an ancient power, and just as it dies, we get that sweet, sweet boost to every stat. Arvin's last Pokemon is Maboostiff. He terror darks and hits a boosted crunch, but we tank it like a champ, and fire off a massively boosted surf to win us 
just suffice and defeat Arvin. Our next battle immediately after is none other than Director Clayville himself. He's got a pretty unique team, but I think we got the coverage to deal with it. We lead off with our Barrios as he leads with Orangaroo. This is an annoying Pokemon to deal with because of its yawn spam. We hit an Ice Beam, but it's got good bulk, so we don't do half, as he does in fact yawn us. I now swap to Alistair as he goes for a foul play, which does a good chunk of damage to us. We then hit a boosted Acrobatics, and that deals quite quickly with a Psychic Monkey. Out next is a Bomber Snow. I make a slight misplay by going into Gastrodon as we tank a Blizzard nicely though. Then we swap into Heracles on the Woodhammer, which does a big bit of damage to us, and he takes recoil too. I opt to go for a Heavy Slam as I don't want to lower our defences, and we do an okay amount of damage to him, but then a Bomber Snow sets up an Aurora Veil, boosting his team's defence and special defence. We Heavy Slam again, and then we get hit by a Blizzard, putting Heracles super low. I decide now he's low enough to finish him off with a close combat. Out next is my favourite Pokemon, Houndoom, who would have guessed? We swap to Kratos, who easily tanks a Fire Blast, and thankfully no burn. The next turn, we unfortunately have to say bye to Houndoom and take him down with an Earthquake. I'm sorry, Doggo. Clivel's fifth Pokemon is Poltegeist. Our Garchomp knows Crunch, and the weak, defenseless Cup gets eaten alive by our Kratos. Out next is Amoongus. The Spores probably come in, so I connect to Dragon Claw, hoping to get poison from Effect Spore, but we get put to sleep, as he did in fact Spore us anyway. This gives us an easy swap to Zeus, who takes a critical hit Hex, and now we can Terrastalize. We don't need the electric boost yet as we need to take down Amoongus first, but that's easily done with a fire punch and this puts him down on his last Pokemon, Quaquaville, Quaquaville one of them. Clivel terrestrializes him to a pure water type. We are faster though and a terror boosted thunder punch takes him down beating Clivel. With Clivel beat we can challenge Cassipia who is actually Penny straight after. She uses a team of evolutions but we got this. Penny's lead is Umbreon and we lead off with Heracles. It's a pretty straightforward start for us. We hit a close combat and Umbreon falls. Fantastic. Her second Pokemon is Flareon. We have Earthquake and Heracles might is just too much and Flareon falls to a single ground attack too. Third Penny sends out Vaporeon. I decide now is a good time to switch into Zeus as we get hit by a Hydro Pump that does a fair bit of damage to us if I'm being honest. We then Terrastalize and Zeus fires off a Terror Boosted Thunder Punch for the one hit knockout. She sends out Leafeon next and I don't want to risk dying so we use a Boosted Volt Switch still doing a quarter to say it's resisted and go into Boreas. It's a good job we did switch as he critical hits a Leaf Blade nearly taking Boreas out too. I know he can't quick attack us so I stay in an Ice Beam and we take down Leafeon. Out next is Jolteon, the electric type. So free switch to Kranos as he goes for a Thunder, which we obviously are immune to. I then get hit by a pathetic quick attack before taking him out with a single earthquake. However, her race Sylveon is out now, and it's a big threat. She terrestrializes, boosting a fairy type attacks even more as we swap to Alistair, who does not take a Moonblast as well as I thought he would. We then swap to Poseidon, who takes one a lot better, and it looks like we can take one more attack. We take another Moonblast to put super low, and our surf does about 25%, thanks to Sylveon's great special defense. I look at my team and we actually have zero switch-ins to a terror boosted Moonblast. Something has to fall now. I choose Boreas who has only been with us for a short amount of time but really helped the team out and with a Moonblast Boreas falls to Penny. R.I.P. This now gives us a free switch into Zeus. It's our only hope. We have a fantastic attack stat and we terror boosted. Our thunder punch connects and it looks like we do just enough damage to take out Sylveon and beat Penny in the process. This means we can now start the final fights. First is Nimona, our weak rival from the start, who is finally a match for Paul. We've added Eris to the team in replace of our fallen Boreas. We lead off with Heracles, and Nimona leads off with Lycanroc. He sets up Stealth Rocks, which is really going to hurt our team when we have to swap, as we just demolish Lycanroc with a stab close combat, and that's one Pokemon down. She sends out Palmart next, and I think an electric move is coming, so I swap to Kratos, who takes Stealth Rock damage, and then eats a close combat too. That's not great. I decide with his defense drop to unleash an Earthquake and take down the electric Pokemon in a single hit. Third out is Gudra, and honestly, even though its defense is the lowest stat, I don't want to risk Kratos here, so I swap to Eris on the incoming Ice Beam, and after Rocks, we tank it okay. I then stay in and throw an Ice Punch, and Eris shows its worth to us as it takes out Gudra in one single freezing blow. Nimona sends out Orthworm next, and we've got to switch. I go into Poseidon, who gets body pressed yet again, sheesh. Then becomes a bit of a stall battle between me hitting Surfs and recovering off the body presses. Eventually, we are at a high enough HP 
key where I decide to take down Orphoim with a Surf, leaving at just over half after leftover recovery. Then comes the Dunsparce. I swap back to Heracles who takes Stealth Rock damage, then a Hyper Drill, but we tank it like a champ. We then fire off a close combat, lowering our defense and special defense, but taking it out in one hit. This leaves her ace and last Pokemon, Meowskarada. I swap into Alistair and it actually Thunder Punch, so we take zero damage on the switch, apart from Stealth Rocks. We Terrastalize into a pure flying type, meaning now we take reduced damage from Flower Trick, even though it always critical hits, and with a flying no item boosted acrobatics, annihilate the grass starter, beating Nimona and proving she is still not a match for Paul. This just leaves one final showdown, one final battle to win the run. This is it. This is the end we've all been waiting for. Can Paul be a hardcore Nuzlocke with Pokemon Violet? Now it's time to find out. Turo leads with Iron Moth, a futuristic Pokemon, and we lead off with Heracles. We take a fiery dance, hurting us badly, but we dish out a four times super effective earthquake for a one hit knockout on the bug. Second, Turo sends our Iron Bundle. I decide to stay in and tank a hit with Heracles as we eat a freeze dry in the process. We retaliate with a massive close combat, and Heracles has now took out two of the Professor's Pokemon with not many issues. Third is Iron Jugglus. I decide to save Heracles, he deserves it, and we swap into Poseidon, and we get critically hit from an air slash on the switch. Leftovers puts us healthily, and we just need one hit off on this thing. Iron Jugglist Dark Pulses us, flinching us because of course he does, and we get a little bit more HP back from Leftovers. We then get Dark Pulsed again, and flinched again, rendering Poseidon now useless for the fight. We've got to switch, so I go into Aerys as we resist the Dark Pulse on the swap. Aerys then lets out a freezing ice punch for a one-hit knockout on Iron Jugglist, and we're halfway through the final battle. Next is Iron Hands. We have an easy switch into Alistair as he goes for a Drain Punch that doesn't do too much to us at all. We retaliate the next turn with an Acrobatics that looks like a free-hit knockout as Iron Hands spams Iron Heads. We Acrobatics again, bringing him low as his Iron Head brings brings Alistair really low too, but Alistair the next turn can take him out finally with a flying type move. Fifth is Iron Thorns. We have to swap it into Kratos we go as we tank the Stone Edge. I miss Clit Rock Slide here and we miss it as well as Iron Thorns hits an Earthquake on Kratos. We then take him out with a four times super effective Earthquake of our own. This leaves one Pokemon left to defeat, his ace, Iron Valiant, who's the one standing in our way of victory. I don't trust a one hit knockout from our Kratos, so I swap into Aeris for the sacrifice as he falls to a spirit break. Thanks for your service, Aeris. This now gives us a free switch into Zeus. I terastalize to boost our electric type attacks even more as Iron Valiant hits a brick break doing insane damage to us. We Thunder Punch putting him on just a sliver, but it's not enough to take him out. Now I'm panicking, our team is heavily destroyed. I swap into Poseidon and he falls after an insane performance to a cycle cut. I'm still not thinking straight, is the pressure gonna get to me? I go into Alistair hoping to maybe outspeed, but we don't and I Alistair falls to a spirit break too. We have to go into Kratos now. It's our last hope to win the fight and the run. We have to pray we are faster or survive a hit. Thanks to Zeus's damage earlier, Kratos is in fact faster and takes him out of an earthquake, beating Churro and winning the run. We lost a lot of Pokemon here, some needlessly, but three warriors come through and Paul defeats a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Violet. This run was super fun to do. My first Nuzlocke ever and a hardcore one at that. I'm glad I did it as Paul 2, we had some strong Pokemon to use and it was still really challenging for me. If you would like to see more Nuzlocke of me, subscribe as I put out weekly Pokemon content. Leave a like if you enjoyed it too. Who do you want to see me attempt this with next? Let me know in the comments. As always, if you're still watching, I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.